What's up, everyone? Welcome back to Lollipops to Die For. I'm your host, Stephanie, and this is my co-host, Simona. And today we are speaking about the, the Vampire of Bucharest. Ian Romaro, the Vampire of Bucharest, is a murderer like no other. From vampirism, cannibalism, necrophilia, taking after his serial killer father. So without further ado, let's get into this. Well, people have often questioned what exactly makes a killer or a serial killer. It is nature, is it you know, nurture? Is it hereditary? Is it your upbringing? Well, the case of Yon Romaru, adapted as the vampire of Bucharest and or the wolfman, may reveal that it's actually both. Um, mm. Interestingly enough, both Yon and his father, his name was Gloria Romaru, were extremely brutal serial murderers in their own times. Mm. Ion Romero's animalistic murder spree from 1970 to 1971 in Romania was so notorious that innocent namesakes legally altered their surnames rather than to have any association with Romero. Bucharest was on high alert during that year um, when the so-called vampire of Bucharest of the Blondes Killer was on the loose. Romaro's final tally entered into double figures with four murders from the upteen attacks on women. Each time, his method was identical and brutal to the extreme. Ion or Ion used an axe and a metal rod to mutilate the women. He bit flesh off of all his victims repeatedly, and authorities believe that he ate the parts. Some victims who survived also testified that Ion poked holes in them and drank their blood. Ew. Little did anybody know that Yuan's uh, father, uh, Flora Romaru, had committed four murders in uh, 1944, which was two years before Yuan was uh, born in October 1946. Mm. All the crimes occurred during stormy weather, so they both loved stormy weathers uh, to do to pursue their uh, crime, and all the victims were on ground floor apartments. Easy access. I know. Mm -hmm. Also, they had they had all been bashed in the head with a blunt weapon. As you will see, the details of this case will match closely between Yon Romaro and his father, and. Uh, for example, Flora left behind shoes and fingerprints uh, at the crime scene. However, he was never caught by authorities. Mm. Uh, this piece of evidence would later uh, reveal his guilt, uh, but not until it was too late to punish him. Mm. <clears throat> Ion's father planted the seeds for his child's brutality early in Ion's life. As the eldest chi uh, child, Ion witnessed his father's abuse of his mother on a daily basis. Floria Romaro finally left and moved to Bucharest, but he left behind a raging misfit that courted trouble. Yes. Mm. But let's see where it began. So before his conviction of aggravated theft, when he <laughs> was 18 years old, Yon had already forged a reputation for himself. Mm. So he inherited a little bit of the dad's genes. Um, he, uh, forced, he was forced to repeat ninth grade Mm. And it was discovered that he had an ongoing sexual relationship with his teacher, with his teacher's underage daughter. But this, he would be underage as well, right? I know. Yeah. So that, but I guess in, Teenagers. back then in Romania, it's old school. Nobody was supposed to do that. Mm. Despite all this, Ion passed his formal education and acquired passing grades. So mm. he wasn't that bad, but he wasn't that bright either. Okay, so in a few months, on either side of Christmas 1970, a bizarre crime wave shocked the city of Bucharest. At the time, nobody knew who ventured out late at night with an axe, an iron bar, a hammer, and a knife to target lone restaurant staff on their way home from work. All of these attacks took place in the early hours of the morning. Each time, the weather was extreme. 
This paralleled Anne's father's crimes, mild and calm nights seemed to keep the criminals at bay. As a result of all the attacks, the women of Bucharest were fearing for their lives back then. Mm -hmm. um, they would only go out after 9 p.m. for fear and uh, in the company of chaperones, uh, either with a large group of women or a company of a trusted man. No. The lack of details issued by the investigating officers didn't help ease any fears. So people, women in general started being very, very afraid for their lives. As they should. Right. Yeah. So some of the crimes, the police charged Romero with uh, 23 violent crimes. The worst of these include in 1970, on April 8th, the premeditated murder of Elena Opria, a neighbor, interrupted the attack and forced him to flee. No rape took place at this time. On June 1st, 1970, Romero beat Florica Marcu unconscious in front of her home. He took her to Safanta Veneri Cemetery, where he pushed her off a fence, raped her, and stabbed her. Ian did drink some of her blood, but a truck driver had saved her life. On July uh, 19th, 1970, Olga Baratoru became Romero's third victim after he raped her during the attempt of her life. She also sustained serious injury from her from an aver aggravated theft. Jesus. 1971. So, <laughs> it keeps yeah. going. It keeps going because he, he pursued a lot of women. Yes, 23 he did. violent crimes. So in 1971, on February 15, 1971, just like Olga, Georgita Spetku was lucky to survive Yuan's attacks. Mm. On February 17, 1971, two days later, this man, uh, 48 hours after Georgita um, nar narrowly survived an assault, her mother struck again. So this time on Elisabetta Flore, who also escaped um, with her life. Mm. On March 4th, 1971, Fonika Ilie found herself in the wrong place at the wrong time with the wrong man who paid the ultimate price. So I guess she was dead. Yeah. On April 8th, 1971, uh, this is perhaps the most sadistic of all the all his crimes up to date. Uh, the unfortunate Gurgitsa Popa suf uh, suffered 48 stab wounds to her head, chest, limb, and limbs. Subsequently, he stamped on stamped on her on his her ribs and bit her corpse. So he had this habit of biting mm. the, the corpses of women. On May first, nineteen seventy one, Stana Sarachin managed to fend off a sexual assault from him. <clears throat> on um, May fourth, nineteen seventy one, Ramar raped and murdered Mihaela Ursu. Someone interrupted him in the middle of the crime and he managed to escape. Mm. However, his bloodlust was unsatisfied, so he went on another hunt. Two hours later, he managed to find Maria Yordake and he inflicted the terrible assault upon her. Mm. Despite being uh, repeatedly battered with an iron bar, she somehow managed to escape his clutches, forcing Romaro to drop the blunt instrument. And on a May 6, 1971, Romaro tried to add two more murders to his catalog of horrendous crimes. Both Viorica Tatu and Elena Buluch survived <clears throat> their encounters with Romaro. Oh. So his arrest, investigators had initiated Operation Vulture and had managed to draw on the services of 6,000 members of law enforcement agencies, 100 cars, 40 motorcycles, and various members of the public from many walks of life. Even with this impressive dragnet scouring the streets of Bucharest, Romaro managed to commit one more murder in scores of frenzies attacks before finally being caught. Uh, he was arrested. Romero took the right to remain silent, literally, in custody. He did a little more than stare into space without any apparent emotion. Well, it's interesting how, in the end, how they got him to confess on some of them. Did he get out even after uh, that? Because he, no. he committed how much? 23 crimes. Right. No. So, since he wasn't volunteering on confessing any of it, uh -huh. um, the police plotted a, a little strategy mm -hmm. uh, and they sent an undercover officer with him in order to get the confession. The undercover officer posed as a thief and managed to get confession for over 20 violent crimes, mm. 
after two months of uh, painstaking work. And uh, however, they only charged Romaro with three murders. Mm. He did plead insanity, though. Of course. He did try to convince the authorities that he was not responsible on grounds of insanity. Mm -hmm. So he did, he did try to do that. But uh, ultimately, in the court of law, the judge had sentenced uh, Ian Romaro to death by firing squad, and all his appeals had failed. So on October 23rd, 1971, officers took Ion to his place of execution. Three of the officers had to physically move him. After they tied him to a stake, Romaro tried to bite off his own clothes. He twisted himself around in the pole in a fruitful effort to avoid punishment. Romaro begged for his own father to come and witness the execution, and he said he was the only one who was guilty. The firing squad carried out the sentence. Ion Romaro lies in the town cemetery in an unmarked grave. Mm. So, oddly enough, uh, exactly one year to the day after the execution of Ion Romaro, Flora Romaro, his father, officially fell off a train. Hmm? However, other <coughs> Romanian sources say that security pushed him out. Gloria died that day following um, follow-up forensic tests determined that his shoe side, fingerprints, and height all matched the evidence and testimony from the serial murders in 1944. So he had already died by the time they found the proof. Wow. Um, so this whole case basically proves, first of all, it's a very famous Romanian case. That's why I wanted to bring it up. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people don't remember accurately the details, but um, this also proves uh, that some um, serial murders mm -hmm. are having genetically uh, carried on genes yes. of psychopathy. Right. That makes them... Um, basically commit either the same type of murders of their parents correct or correct go into a spree of doing it mm -hmm. so i mean he didn't have a happy childhood no but so is millions of but people. he learned the best from his father right right so well he had i wouldn't exactly call it the best right but so it kind of proves part of it is genetic part of it is uh basically the way you are you're growing up and right. what your parents um right. teach you right which is not necessarily good things and back in the 1970s mm -hmm. in romania it was not the, the best of periods so right um in the grand scheme of things he didn't have much to learn right right but he is um he's a proven case for you know genetic testing for mm -hmm. this type of um uh, of serial killers so it doesn't excuse them and of course he had a brutal he was brutally executed you know in the end um but so uh, the, all those victims that he all those 23 victims uh, very sad you know, very sad sad of how brutal he proved to be in the exactly end, you know yeah so yeah. we wanted to bring this up to you and remind you that i don't i wouldn't say oh have that much compassion towards this type of people but also understand where they're coming from everybody has a story and a history so uh, as long as we know about it we understand it we can you know um see differently the reality i don't know if i could have if compassion. i can have compassion for somebody that killed like that no, no because if that was your your mom or your sister or your daughter that was murdered i highly doubt you would probably have compassion no you i wouldn't. mean there are i've seen trials where people have forgiven but um no. I, I no no i don't think so i don't know but it does bring i mean to me reading stuff like that like details of that person's mm -hmm. life it makes you understand okay well you understand that's that's how they got there right. but that doesn't right. mean i have to have a heart for them no yeah i mean realistically everybody has a family everybody mm -hmm. has siblings and mom dad and if something happened to your to your family you would not have no. i don't think i would have no that in me no uh, but who knows i yeah. wasn't put in that position but the apple doesn't fall far too from far from the tree <laughs> <laughs> all righty guys until the next time always remember truth is always scarier bye bye, -bye.